Orlando, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. Orlando, as a cliff diver, if you had to choose to excel in one trade and be average on the other two, which one would you choose? Physical fitness, focus and fear management, or technique? Uh, technique. Technique? Technique, definitely, because, you know, technique stays with you uh, for a long time, uh, especially in diving. You know, if I, in, in, in my case, my technique was very good from the beginning. And then uh, strength, you can work up and down, and, um, you know, mental toughness, y it goes up and down as well. Okay. But if you have good technique, you can always go back to, to being really good after you have a, a bad time. It stays with you forever. Yeah, technique. <laughs> good, good technique is probably the best thing you can have, at least in my opinion, yeah. To what extent is cliff diving different from, from Olympic diving? I mean, is it a totally different animal? Does the skill set have to be different? Um, uh, okay, I mean, the skill set is the same. The, the diving elements, the technique is all the same. We do the same type of dives. We use the same type of, of technique. What is the main change? What is the main difference? The height, obviously. Uh, we're three times higher. And because of the height, um, we get to do a lot more uh, maneuvers in the air. We get to do more things. We have more time in the air. But in, in, in the basic technique is basically the same. It's just the same. Cliff diving is no joke. I mean, one could hurt himself or herself badly if something goes wrong. How do you manage the balance between, on the one hand, like not letting fear paralyze you before a dive, but on the other hand, uh, maintaining certain level of alertness so you don't make a mistake or becomes, you know, get sloppy or reckless? Um, I mean, uh, to me, cliff diving is, is, a, is a mental game. You know, physically, you're ready. You know you're ready. I mean, if not, you're not going to stand up there and try to dive. So uh, physically, you're ready. But mentally, you, you have to be able to control that. And your head is always telling you. And, and to me, I actually like it that my, my mind, my brain is telling me, be careful. This is serious. You could get hurt if you make a mistake. So I, I just try to overcome that. I know that's going to come. And then I control it. And I'm ready to dive. But you have to be on point on your mental game. If not, you're not going to be able to dive yeah visualization is a very important aspect of cliff diving right you have to visualize your dive again and again and again uh do you use visualization beyond that i mean like other athletes for example visualize themselves winning or on the podium things like that right to kind of like trying to trick their minds into thinking that that has happened already do you play with that at all or um it, it, i use visualization mainly uh, uh, for the dive, you know, mm -hmm. but in other situations as well, I, I put myself in that in that position I want to be, even in my personal life, you know. So uh, it is an important tool for me, you know, because uh, in diving, when I when I close my eyes, I can see my dive in my head, no problem, yeah. you know. It's there, is is I can repeat it over and over. So because it works so well for me in diving, I try to maybe transfer that same skill to to other situations in life, yeah. like outside the world of. Diving even? Yeah, yeah, even outside the world of yeah. diving, you know, like, you know, people say like that, that you visualize, yeah. you may be able to make it come true. So, hey, sometimes it happens, sometimes yeah. it doesn't, but at least it's a good thought. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't hurt to try, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you close your eyes during the dive and not many divers do that. Why is that? Um, hey, hey th this goes us a little bit back. I'm 42 okay. years old, going to 43. Uh, I learned a little bit of older technique back in the day. It was uh, you spin and you feel what you're doing in the air. Of course, you. I, I don't close my eyes the whole dive. I have my eyes open and then I jump, I close, and then I do one part, and then I open my eyes and finish. Um, you know, back in the day, it was it was not so important to spot, to, to get reference points. It was more important to feel. You know, nowadays, obviously, the dives are more difficult, are more, um, you know, technically are more difficult, and then it's more somersaulting and twisting. It's very important to spot. All the divers can spot. I, I don't. I don't. I just huh. learned a different technique. It works. It works great for me, but I wouldn't recommend it. Technically, there is a better way to do it. Oh, okay. So it's something that comes from the past. I know you can only perform a limited number of dives, like in a day or in a given period of time, right? Because of the uh, physical strain of the water entry, correct? Uh, how do you develop a new dive? How do you, <laughs> <laughs> how do you develop the proprioception required to actually 
go on the platform and do it. Um, you know, it, what we do is because we don't have, we don't get a chance to dive from 27 meters all the time. So what we do is we divide this dive yeah. into parts and then from different heights, see maybe three meters, five meters, seven meters, 10 meters in a regular pool, we do all these different parts in, okay. in separate ways. And then we come to 27 meters and put it all together. You okay. know, it's not, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy to do that. But once you figure out this the system, you can do it. You know that what you can do from 10 or 12 meters is just the right timing to add certain maneuver from 27 meters. Um, you know, you got to save your body. You cannot be practicing from that height. You'd be injured really quick if you do it every day. But, uh, you know, we have a system figure out. So you have to just make sure all the separate elements of the dive work in the pool and then you transfer all that together to the 27 so meters so you kind of deconstruct it and then put it all together back exactly exactly you have to and you have to understand the height you know maybe 10 to 12 meters you should be finished with all the difficult parts of the dive and then after that is a landing maneuver so if you can do it from 12 meters basically you just add the landing maneuver from 27. in your physical training is there anything that you do differently than other divers so um, I, I don't think so. No. I mean, we all train the same uh, basic things. You know, the diving technique, we all have to do it because that's what the judges are looking at. Strength, yeah. uh, maybe some do it differently, um, but we all have to be strong. You know, the impact with the water is very hard, yeah. so all have to be strong. Yeah. Um, flexibility and uh, core stability core stability is very important you know most sports have a support system whether it be standing on the ground or holding on to something we're in the air on our, on our own mm -hmm. and our own support system is the core so that's very important and then mental training um i think we all do the same just in different ways some people may do yoga some people may do visualization and like breathing exercises some people may do crossfit some others will do Olympic weightlifting, you know, so it's it, everybody has their own way, but it's the the basic main components we all do the same. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's all the same, right? Yes. <laughs> what is your weakest your weakest point as a diver? I mean, something that you regularly have to go back to and work on. Um, the weakest link <laughs> in the <laughs> Orlando Duques is diving. It, I mean, f for a few years, it was strength, and okay. it was due to some injuries I had. You know, every time you're injured strength is really hard to maintain so yeah. that always goes away so maintaining strength is is a tough part i had a really bad injury in 2011 i had another injury last year so that always sets you back uh luckily uh, my technique is good so i can always rely on that i can depend on that and mentally i'm also pretty strong so i can i can rely on that but uh, i will say strength you know because the strength goes up and down so much and right. uh, depending also uh, not only in injuries, sometimes we travel so much and it's hard to find the right conditions to do your training or even from traveling, you're so tired right. that uh, it's hard to maintain that level. Yeah. You mentioned focus. Do you work on that at all? Like specifically, like do you have a meditation practice or some kind of mindfulness practice, something like that? Uh, not, not so much like meditation. Uh, it, it has to do more with visualization, you know, because... Uh, uh, I, s I divide, I separate my dive in my head in so many pieces and then little by little I, I put it together so that I can repeat it in my head many times. Right. Uh, I also do it with breathing exercises. The thing is when I'm standing on the platform, I get very excited, you know, I'm breathing hard, your blood is pumping really fast and it's hard to concentrate like that. So I know that, that if I'm breathing in my stomach, I know I can come down and I know I can concentrate again. You know, if you're too excited, uh, you're forgetting things, you know, right. so I know I need to calm down. Uh, I make sure that I'm breathing. I make sure that I'm relaxed. And then, you know, I can do the dive. Right. But it, it's nothing too specific, you know. It's just no, breathing, no relaxing. Exactly. Like just just being more, more aware of what's happening. I know I can do these dives. I try to talk to myself. I talk myself into it. I know I'm, I've done these dives. I know Give how to do it. Give an example. What is this self-talk that you do? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, like as soon as I get scared, because naturally I get scared. I mean, I'm jumping from very high. is very dangerous. So as soon as I feel that, I kind of just think about it and say, like, Listen, Orlando, y you know what you're doing. You've done this dive. You prepared this dive. I've never go up there without preparing any dive. So if I'm up here, it's because I prepared the dive. I'm ready to do it. And, um, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. I, I, so then I go like, I've, even it brings a smile to my face sometimes because I go like, 
I know what I'm doing. Let's do it. Come on. You know, I've prepared this. I'm ready. Wow. Uh, that feels good, actually. And anchors you back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It brings yeah. you back down. You know, it, it, it tells you, even though you're scared, naturally, you know what you're doing is dangerous, but you're prepared. You, you, you've done your job. You've done your preparation. This should be a walk in the park. You got it. Tell me about your longevity as an athlete. What do you think, like looking back in retrospect, what do you think you have done Or what do you think you have not done all these years to be able to sustain such a high level in your career? Um, I mean, uh, it, it has to do with preparation, obviously. Um, I dedicated my life to the sport. Um, luckily, from the beginning, like I said, I had very good technique. And that's something you can carry with you. Um, you just have to maintain your strength. You know, your mind has to be sharp as well, but that comes with preparation. I've done that all my life. You know, I've always been very disciplined, very dedicated. And, uh, you know, it shows a few years I go down and then I come back up, but, but you always come back. Up. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Hey, that's, that's <laughs> how life it is. You know, yeah. if life was up here all the time, you yeah. know, it, it wouldn't have all those peaks that are so exciting. Uh, just also understanding that when you calm down, you can come back up. You know, if you've been up there, you can you can do it again. Uh, and trusting yourself. I mean, I trust myself. I know that if I've done the work and everything works, is because you know I, I deserve it. If right. I if I have not done the work and there is no results, I also understand that I go like, hey, how can I expect something better if I haven't done it? So mm -hmm. uh, from from the beginning when I said I want to accomplish that, I put all my time into, the, into that. My goals are very clear, always in front of me. I know what is it that I want to accomplish. And I think that's help. Um, this is a sport that is so technical and is so much in your head that age, I mean, It's not that it doesn't matter, but it gives you an extra years to, <laughs> to enjoy it. Great. They say that Arnold Schwarzenegger used to win the bodybuilding competitions, not only because he was the best, which he probably was, but also because he was a master in psychological warfare. Is there any of that going on in the World Series? Even in a subtle <laughs> manner, <laughs> even in a very polite manner. But You know what? There is no secrets here. I always tell people that there's no secrets. When we start the season, I look at the divers. I know what they're doing, and I know how their season is going to be. There's no secrets here. You can tell who prepared well. You can tell who's ready to do a good season nice. uh, because the preparation takes so long, you know. Um, of course, we play games. We try to intimidate each other. You know, I sometimes I make some bets with some other divers, but but it's all in fun. You know, okay. in reality, if if you look to the training, you know who's where and who's not really there. You know, <laughs> uh, it, right. it's, it's a sport like that. You know, right. this, there is no surprises here. What is the biggest misconception, Orlando, about cliff diving? I mean, something that people not very familiar with the sport think that is obviously not true. Uh, that we're a bunch of crazy guys jumping from high cliffs and and uh, trying to do things. Um, what they don't realize is that I've been diving for 30 years. I've done over 10,000, 15,000 dives from this height probably. Hmm. And I know exactly to the millimeter what I'm doing. In my head, everything is in there. So um, most people look at us and think we just stand there and try to see what works. No, I've done it thousands of times. I prepared these dives for years and then I'm making it work. I mean, in competition, of course, the judges are uh, looking at your technique and everything, but the dive most likely is going to work because we prepared so much. Accidents almost never happen. It's true. If you were the emperor of all galaxies in the cliff diving universe <laughs> what would you change in cliff diving if you could uh what would i change in cliff diving if i could I, you know what to be honest i wouldn't change too much really because it's it, this is one of those natural sports it's you standing on a rock there is water down there nature provides that you get a body and is you and your body making all of these things work It can be the easiest dive. It doesn't have, it doesn't even have to be too high. Diving is very enjoyable, and um, I mean because I've experienced it in so many different levels, I will keep it as it is. Uh, I would probably like to try more things for me, but I ex I experienced so many of those aspects that I would like people to maybe even experience half of what I have ex I have right. done. You know, right. it, it it really is a natural sport. Anybody can do it. 
find a high place, jump in the water. And a lot of people have experienced it. And when I talk to them, you can always see their face light up, even if they crash a little bit because they remember the crash and it was like, wow, that was a crazy thing I did. Right. But when it works well, it's a fun thing to do. When it doesn't, it was like the craziest thing they've done in their life. So they'll remember it one way or another. It's I a, think it's, it's a win-win, right? Exactly. I think it's a great sport. You know, it it um, it evolves in terms of difficulty what we do, but the basic thing is the same. Hmm. Are there commonalities among cliff divers, Orlando? I mean, if you took the ten or twenty best cliff divers in the world, would that group be a cross section of the general population? Or uh, let me give you an example. I asked this question to Isabel Belostegui, a very accomplished doctor from Spain, about, doc about doctors. And she told me, well, doctors are very competitive. Doctors <laughs> are, <laughs> are perfectionist. And even though they have big egos, many of them, uh, they do have an inner desire to help others, right? Uh -huh. How would you define in those terms elite the group of the best cliff divers in the world? Uh, I mean, the best cliff diver in the world, uh, for sure, competitive you know we love to compete you know uh that that's one thing but I, I think it's a very specific group uh why because you have to be able to confront one of your biggest fears probably one of natural's biggest fears which is a fear of heights and and do all these things that you know you're putting yourself in danger right. so so you have to be able to do that and i don't think too many people can handle that very well and do it over and over and over and over again you know uh And, and in another way, the good thing is it, it's not such a, let's say, close uh, personality. If, if you think about it, there are some guys that are athletes, that are great skiers, that are great um, at every sport that they do. But then we have piano players and then we have right. guys that paint. But just physically, they can do these dives and they enjoy it very much. But in general, yeah, it's a small group that will actually put themselves through that day after day. <laughs> What have you learned competing in the sport that you apply in your everyday life? Um, you know, the main thing is I know I have to work for what it, whatever that I want to accomplish. You know, uh, in diving, in my sport, in high diving especially, if you do not do the work, this is not going to work. You can be the craziest person around. You can be uh, the strongest person around. The dive is not going to work, period. It's not going to happen. Uh, I've learned that I have to do all my preparation. I have to do all my training, even for years after right. doing a new dive. And that I can transfer to my life. If I want to uh, sign a new contract, if I want to buy a new car, if I want to buy a new house, it's not just that I want it. I have to work hard for it and I have to make sure that I'm going to make it to the point that I'm, I'm accomplishing that, what I set out for. Hmm. We live times, Orlando, in which we see many athletes become very emotional when they win. They kind of lose their composure. I'm not being judgmental, but they kind of lose their composure. They cry. You are well known for choosing not to do that, hmm. even in moments in which you have had very important victories in your career. Why is that important to you? Um, it, it's not so much that it's important. It's, it's more that I'm able to control my feelings very well. You know, I'm as excited as I am, uh, you know, hearing your national anthem and waving your flag and your wife is crying, your coach is crying, everybody's excited. Uh, I'm enjoying the moment. This is a big moment for me. And uh, I, I'm just able to control my feelings. I think it's, it has to do with my training and diving. You know, yeah. if I let my feelings overcome, um, you know, the situation, it's just I'm not able to perform. So to me, it's more like enjoying the moment. And, and I respect all the guys that or, or the girls that they cry, they get emotional. I think it's beautiful. I think it's really nice. Uh, it, it's just, I'm, you know, I'm a little different. I, I have a lot of fun. I always smile. I always, you know, look at everybody. I'm having a good time, you know. I don't cry, but I smile a lot. You know, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm enjoying the moment for sure. <laughs> Did you have any habit or any routine you, that you do daily? Something that is important to you that a day without that is not a good day? Uh, any kind of exercise, you know. Anything, uh, whether it's running, swimming, diving, strength training, I everything. I, I have to. My body feels better, you know. Even sometimes on vacation, I jump in the water and swim 
just because my body feels much better. I've been doing exercise for 30 years over at, at a competitive level. Uh, the body wants it. The body, the, the body needs it. And uh, I enjoy it very much. So right. I, I do exercise all the time. <laughs> Outside the world of diving, um, what is the best decision not to do something that you have ever taken? Who? Uh, because if I, if I ask you in cliff diving, you would tell me not to not, <laughs> not to not dive. To that's too easy. Yeah, that's too easy. <laughs> uh, outside of life, the the best decision was probably uh, not to finish my cr my career at university. Uh, where, where, you, where did you? <laughs> I started electronic engineering. Okay. Uh, I mean that's not a good thing. However, I chose not to finish my my university because I was going to dedicate my life to diving. You know, it wasn't because I was living in university because I had no clue what I wanted to do. I wanted to be better at diving. I knew I had a chance and uh, it wasn't easy, but I took the decision I left. And well, here I am. We're talking about about this, you know, maybe I could have been a very good engineer. I don't know. But I, I think that was a very good decision for my professional career, even for my personal life. Mm. Um, not to finish university, if, if you believe that. I mean, I'm not encouraging anybody to not finish the university. But if you're not going to, you got to make sure you put all your energy into whatever else you want to be uh, very accomplished at. What are you most proud of that most people don't know about? Proud of uh, oh, <laughs> that people don't know about. They, this is tough, but uh, you know, uh, my family. My, I, I think a lot of people know, but if, if they don't, is my family. Right. You know, they they're the ones that uh, who would have thought? Uh, you know, uh, as a middle lower class family from Colombia that has no tradition in diving that they're gonna support me all the way until the end no matter what let's see what's gonna happen um, and, and it works you know I think it it uh, you know a lot of times I always thank my training my coaches and everybody but from the beginning of that didn't happen yeah. and uh, and maybe sometimes I don't even give them enough credit but it, it it's it's all due to them you know without without that beginning uh, it this doesn't happen I want to be respectful of your time, Orlando. Last question. What advice would you give to your 20-year-old self? <laughs> Pay more attention to your coaches. <laughs> 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 you know, it's, <laughs> it's hard. You know, at 20 year old, we feel invincible. We feel like we know everything in this world. And I knew a lot of things, but not everything. Um, and the people that were talking to me, they were very wise. Uh, my coaches, my family, they were always telling me things to make me better. Sometimes I didn't listen. Um, I would like to listen a little bit more. G give it another go and, and see what happened. Uh, however, you know, it's never, it's never too late. Eventually I listen and things work <laughs> out. But at 20 year old, I was a little crazy. Like most are. <laughs> Orlando, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's thank been you. a great pleasure. Good luck.